I basically think that media buying as it has been practiced for the past like 10 years is basically dead. CTR, we basically tripled their CTR. Wow. And their CBC is down like 40% or something. Wow. Um, over, a, over a couple of turns. And you can only do that. The best performing ad had like some weirdness to it. Okay. Like the, it had like an artifact in it. Um, and I think it's because it seemed the, the easiest way to raise money is not to persuade someone of your view of the world, it's to find someone who shares your view of the world. Welcome to episode 44 of the New Money Talk. That was per right. with the access and everything. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Oh, Carl, you got so got Matt Osman. The I, I didn't butcher that, right? No, that's good. That's perfect. Good. Thank you. Who uh, who sounds a little South African, but British? Yeah, but I English. English. I've been here for like seven years, and then something happens where you're not quite. You haven't quite gone into like full American, but you still don't really sound like Prince Charles anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it's this. It's like the Mark Lonson effect. If you kind of have this weird transatlantic twang, so I sound like I'm from Johannesburg. There you go. Uh, this is gonna be fun. This so, is gonna be fun. So, <laughs> founder of uh, Treely dot treat.io try treat.io check it out incredible artificial intelligence tool that allows you to produce thousands tens of thousands of image ad creatives in different variations right i don't want to explain it in a way that they're not going to be able to comprehend it so is there a way you can explain it in a way that like a 10 year old would understand yes i'm going to move this yeah okay cool to go um we'll do like a, a smart 10 year old Sure. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> like not an idiot. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, the company is called Treat. Uh, yeah. The the website is trytreat.io, um, and we use generative AI to make unlimited ad creatives, and specifically unlimited winning ad creatives. So the power of AI is not just in like creating these images from text, which obviously people have probably seen on like Twitter and mm -hmm. and other places. It's actually knowing what are the images to create in the first place? Like, what are the things that are going to resonate with specific people? Um, so that could be like a different creative strategy for women versus men or for different age groups or for different skews. So what our AI does is like work out what images should I put in front of different audience segments that will have the highest likelihood of conversion. And then we can create unlimited panels and batches of those ads. So you reduce creative production costs to like zero. Um, and you get to get back some of the performance that was lost, like when Apple did their iOS 14.5 yeah. shenanigans, which I'm sure everyone everyone is everyone <laughs> everyone's crying about that. So, so pretty much in a sense, you are have like the golden ticket to Facebook right now. Well, that's so we like to think so. So, like, I basically think that media buying, as it has been practiced for the past like 10 years, is basically dead. And that the way that agencies uh, have operated is going to just stop being viable. In fact, I think that it's quite possible that AI completely kills agencies um, or that any agencies who are left are going to have to basically completely retool the way that they're, they're constructed because the alpha from like media buying uh, is basically completely gone away. Because if you think about the history of what happened post iOS 14.5, like ATT, was that all of the ad networks, and I'm really thinking about Meta here, um, they took what happened and the way that they reacted was to say, well, the only way we can solve this problem is to basically take the controls away from the marketer. Interesting. So like Advantage Plus on Meta and like Pmax on yeah. Google are these like automated campaign tools that are basically doing all of the targeting that you would normally pay a media buyer yeah. to do. The only input left where you can get like really high leverage and do targeting actually is in creative selection, which means you need to be able to create loads and loads of creative all the time, uh, refresh it because it obviously gets stale. You need to have different creative for different audiences, different creative for different SKUs. And like the production cost of doing that manually would be like crippling. And so AI is the thing that's going to come and save the day. That's what we think anyway. That's what, we, yeah, that's what that's we're a, betting on. That's a great explanation. So instead of paying $1,000 for a photographer to have to go to some beach somewhere to put a different background or overlay or create a different environment for an image, 
you guys can just kind of whip that up through a couple of inputs. Exactly. And we can do one thing, you know, one one step better, which is that, uh, okay, so our, our tool will tell you, hey, we think this product would convert really well if it was shot on the beach. Mm. Oh, okay. wow. So we make a recommendation. So instead of having to like learn what prompt or learn like prompt engineering, which kind of sucks, we'll tell you, hey, we think it should be on the beach. And then obviously like, what kind of beach? Well, oh, uh, we will create 10 different beaches for you. So we'll have like a, like a you know, Cape Cod beach, we'll have like a Hawaiian beach, a Caribbean beach, push all those into Advantage Plus, for example, see which one hits. You go like, it's the Hawaiian one. Okay, we're going to double down on that. We're going to scale that image. We're going to take that to the UGC team. We're going to find an influencer who's on like, you know, the big island who could like yeah. do an unboxing video on the beach for us. So it's about not just like this unlimited creative production, but you can basically use it for like unbelievably rapid, like experimentation and concept testing. Um, and that's where I think it gets like super powerful. I, I'm curious. So like you say also, so you're saying like creative is pushing targeting right now. Cause like there really is no more targeting. Yeah. It's just like broad audience and your creative creates targeting. Now, how does like the platform, the AI, help push to a target right so like give me the example of the beach like what does that do now so yeah so this is a this is a okay so we're gonna explain it like they're a 12 year old now they're, they're now like a smart <laughs> so um yeah what we spent a lot of time building was something that can like understand the like click behavior of various demographics so you can go into our tool and say i want to target um let's say women 18 to 25 and we'll say, okay, it needs to be at the beach. Here are some example beach oh, images. Wow. And you can then say, okay, no, I want to target men 35 to 44 who live in California. And we'll say, okay, it needs to be in the forest, for example. I'm obviously making up these examples. Um, and so we built something that allows you to basically do like lookalike creative, where you can do the targeting at the point of creative production. And it's so cheap to like images are becoming disposable, basically, which means you can just try a bunch of shit. Yeah. really 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 fast without having to invest a bunch of time and money on a photo shoot every time you want to try this stuff interesting and this fully integrates with like shopify and everything yeah too, exactly. like facebook ads and yeah so that. integrates with shopify facebook ads google ads ga etc I, I like the fact that it diagnoses the problem and also si solves the problem because we were even talking about it yesterday uh there's a lot of companies that do either or but they don't do both. that's the thing i think you need to have something that is like full stack like I don't, D 2 C is such a, and e-com generally, which is obviously where we spend most of our time, is such a difficult space because it involves so many, so many specialisms that you have to like mm -hmm. become expert at very, very quickly. So anything that can take, anything that can kind of like free up bandwidth is enormously valuable. We found, and I think, you know, uh, looking at other companies in the space that something that just gives you like a, a diagnosis is not super actionable um and it's like very very hard to like justify paying for like an insight whatever that is you really need to close the loop into like taking corrective action um and so that's something we spend a lot of time like working on is a tool that's basically like completely end-to-end -end that will identify here are the visual elements that you should be using on your in your images to target this demographic to achieve this goal maybe it's increased ctr maybe it's increased roas create those images, push them into production, test them, work out which ones are performing, create more variants, and just do that automatically so that the you know customer doesn't have to think. So, so how much do brands usually spend on like, say you didn't have Treat, right? Yeah. How much would a brand be spending to put all this creative together and make it all a test at all? We're talking like hundreds of thousands of dollars now. Yeah, so the, I mean, yeah. So like it actually would be an un, uh, it would be a, an amount of money that no D2C band could ever uh, possibly justify. So like, let's take the beach example. Um, that is 10 different locations. That is because I've got a Hawaiian beach. I've got... <laughs> oh, wow. So it's just for that, that specific just thing, that specific angle. Right? So you would have to have 10 different photo shoots. That's what? Grand a day, probably. Plus fly to the place. Yeah. yeah. Plus the logistic like, product. Yeah. Whatever. And that's just one... That's like one panel of images that God. takes. So talk about value. It's like, yeah. well, this thing, like how much do you guys charge on? Like, how, can you talk about how much you charge? 
Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it was priced to look like it's very dependent on um, the like the amount of paid social spend. So we we want to try and eat like as much of the workflow that would normally be put in the hands of an agency as possible. Um, so we normally price against what they're currently paying an agency. So we just do it for ninety percent less. Jeez, it's a pretty good deal. So like, look, <laughs> so like, look, if you're paying a hundred thousand dollars right now, yeah, pay us to do it for like ten k. Yeah, it's like, exactly. and it probably work better. Because now you have all the data, behind, like it's, it's not no subjectivity behind it. Exactly, exactly. Uh, so that's that's our yeah our value. That's profits, bad. Ten so, x cheaper. So, <laughs> but, 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 <laughs> but now, are, are you open to being an, uh, an agency enabler though in any way? So if there are agencies that want to offer it as a service and plug it into what they're doing, maybe white label it, whatever it might be. You know, are yeah, ab absolutely. I think the um and like we're we're like very collaborative with agencies. I think with agencies who understand where the world is going um we're super super collaborative and, and we actually have a couple agency partnerships and awesome. advisors uh yeah. who are um you know run agencies what's, what's the perfect size of brand that will actually like the most value possible from this type of tool yeah so i think our sweet spot is you know uh, you know running paid social so call it north of like three million five like Call it like three to twenty million dollars in 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 like GMV annually. Um, we have some brands who are slightly larger, like we work with the brands doing like you know fifty or like you know one hundred and fifty. But the sweet spot, I think, where you're just getting crushed by fees and you really need to cut costs, is in that kind of like sub twenty sub fifteen uh, oh, range. Yeah, I think we're also curious of like your backstory and everything too, because like I feel like obviously. The idea is just amazing and like the value behind it is like nuts. But I'm just very curious myself. How does a a British man <laughs> come to the, <laughs> come to New York and start? Sorry, this like I, it's kind of revolutionary in a sense. The, the ship and the crew is only as good as its captain. Uh, that's what they tell me. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, so I've been I've been in the states for kind of like seven years now. I'm nearly a citizen. I've got to get my green card. <laughs> uh, so I came over. Um, yeah, I'm from London. I trained as a lawyer and then a, like a quant hedge fund trader. So like I traded like crazy uh, structured credit stuff. Um, and then was like super interested in AI um, and have been for a while. And uh, started reading a bunch of, of like AI papers. Um, saw one that really interested me. Uh, I was like sitting at my desk in London at the hedge fund. And I like cold called the writer the author of the paper i said you don't know who i am uh but i think the paper that you've written is really interesting like do you want to start a business and he was insane enough to like continue the conversation <laughs> uh and then we ended up like chatting over like the course of a couple months we uh got into y combinator they had this fellowship program which was a kind of a precursor to their main program we got into that um, so I came over in like 2016, um, and then had a, an AI company in, in Boston uh, that was like completely different. Like it was, we were selling into biotech. Uh, it's a lot, it's very hard to sell the pharmaceutical companies. I can tell you, uh, you sell vaccines and stuff. Yeah, that's about <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then, so I, I ran that for like, for, for four years. So that's the thing that brought me over to the States. Oh, wow. Ran that for four years, sold it in... 2020 on my birthday awesome that's um, a nice birthday present. Well, so actually the the ceo uh he he became a friend i mean he was actually kind of a friend before the acquisition but but he became a friend uh the lawyers were like holding up the paperwork and i asked him as a favor like can you please just get them <laughs> to get over the line so i can sign it before my birthday and he did and we signed it on my uh on my birthday um so, and then I was, you know, working at that company for a little while and then, uh, met my co-founder and, and kind of came up with the idea for this, um, moved to New York in like 2021, um, in the middle of the pandemic. I'm very interested too. how did you pick the vertical niche of like e-commerce kind of like growth marketing type of thing? So my co-founder is a guy called Hugh Hunter. And Hugh, Hugh's been shout out Hugh Hunter. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, you're probably watching this. <laughs> uh, Hugh has been like in ecom for like 15 years, so he was the CTO at Bolton Branch, which is a D2C. 
What is up, New Money Talks fam? Super, super excited to hop on here to shout out our amazing sponsor, Printful. You've definitely heard of these guys, but if you haven't, you need to check them out. These guys are amazing for so many things, but honestly, two things are amazing. Look, if you want to start a business, print-on-demand business, it's amazing. You can literally plug these guys into your Shopify store, and they're on WooCommerce, Wix, you name it, they're on it. Amazing integration. But what you could do, you could start a business tomorrow. Any logo, any design you want on a hat, on a shirt, shorts, joggers, backpacks, mugs, you can make it and not have any inventory. You can drop ship it all from Printful. They're amazing. That's number one. Number two, if you own a business, wow, like you should be ordering from Printful. For ship dudes, we do it. I know for Kyle at Scale Brands, they do it. All merch, hats, backpacks, polos, uniforms. It's less, look, fast shipping, great quality, great prices. You just can't beat it. And also it's low batch. You don't have to order a hundred units. You can order one at a time and the quality is just amazing. We love these guys. You should check them out. We have our link in the description slash NMT. Use the link. We appreciate it. It helps out a whole bunch. And honestly, Printful, there's no one better in this space. So if you need merch, we're about to have some new money talks merch. They're amazing. Printful is the way to go. Check them out. Printful, if you don't know them, you should know them now. New Money Talks fam, I'm telling you, you guys are the best in the space. Anyways, back to the episode. Appreciate you guys. The bed linen company, a competitor to Parachute and Brooklyn. Although they'd probably say that Brooklyn's a competitor to them, whatever. <laughs> um, and But then he was most recently the CTO at Drizzly. Um, and uh, so he, he was there, built up their engineering team that sold to Uber for like a, a billion wow. and a bit. Mm-hmm. Casual. Just yeah, casual. Yeah. Casual <laughs> billion. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think 1.2 uh and i was introduced to him by like an investor friend that we shared um and i was looking for my next thing wasn't sure what it was going to be in um we just really gelled uh as like a as like a duo um and so we decided that like he either needed to do something in my space which was kind of biotech or i was going to do something in his and it probably a lot easier to do something in, <laughs> in his than to go back into biotech um so we then kind of started thinking about like what, yeah, w- what are the implications of of like privacy and iOS fourteen five and like we kind of saw two main opportunities, one of which we discarded, and the the first opportunity was okay, well, um, like attributions now completely balked, uh, like on platform attribution, so people would probably pay for a solution that allows them to like get visibility into attribution. And you saw like Triple Well and North Beam like roughly at the same time be yeah. founded. And then Rockerbox had been around maybe three or four years. No one that. talks about Hyros. It's kind of, you know Hyros? Are you familiar? <laughs> no. That's crazy. Really? They sold for a hundred million dollars. What? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So, ooh, have you ever heard of Alex Becker? Oh yeah, yeah. Really? Alex, yeah. Everyone says hi, like Hyro and Triple Well, like Hyros is like fucking huge. Yeah. It's kind of crazy. No, like because you know, like he was more focused on like the drop shipping world, where it was yeah. like kind of just like like affiliate marketing world. Yeah, no one like everybody was really like, serving like the it was a serving like this U to C brand, but they uh, but they slowly crept in and they saw what was going. on. Well, because he was yeah. plugging things something into like Facebook, it just made it work better. So everyone's <laughs> just like, whoa! When but he was doing? he was a killer marketer. So yeah. like the product is probably the same. I mean, I've used both. You know that Triple Well North theme. They're all kind of fundamentally the same, but the way that he marketed it was just incredible. Yeah. He, I remember like he used to run this Facebook, uh, YouTube ad that are just a killer. He'd be like, with a mic like just staring at you, be like, do you want your Facebook ads to perform like a hundred times better? <laughs> Plug this in right now. Or like, we can guarantee you 80% cheaper ad costs. Honestly, yeah. that'd be a good ad for Tree right there. We should do yeah. I should do, should do something like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, if you want your creative to go a lot more better, be a lot more cheaper, be 80% more efficient. You should talk about Alex Becker. Legit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely legit guy in space. Yeah, they sold for $100 million. Yeah. Wow. I, I don't know. Who, I don't know how we got to that point, to... but... Sorry, I've cut you all. No, no. Is that... There's... Is that the same... We Sorry, one of our advisors is a guy called Alex Becker. I mean, is it the same guy? It's going to be really embarrassing if he sees this. <laughs> uh, I know. Why? I like he's, so he's, he's now... A, get him on the pod. <laughs> is he now... A, he's now a... The, our Alex Becker is now a CMO at a... a, a, a like a weed company. Like a marijuana company. No, I, a no. different one. I don't think so. Okay. Does, you, does your Alex Becker have like five hundred thousand subscribers on YouTube or millions? No. Okay, <laughs> so it's a different, <laughs> one. different one. Okay, cool. Then, uh, then I, <laughs> I apologize. I apologize. Right. Yeah, yeah. Not Alex Becker. Uh, 
so yeah anyway that was like that was one of the opportunities but then what we saw was going to happen was like if the people who really have an incentive to like solve attribution are the people who have like hundreds of billions of dollars of market cap at stake so meta in particular has spent honestly tens of millions if not now hundreds of millions of dollars trying to like fill in the gaps uh that um, have been caused by the, the the apple policy and so what we thought would happen is exactly what did happen which is that they would try and take the controls away uh from uh from media buyers generally and they would leave creative as the kind of the last opportunity and then obviously at the same time all this like dolly generative ai stable diffusion stuff was happening and so we kind of combined the two that's a great like assumption yeah yeah we could have yeah. been really wrong yeah seriously that's a great <laughs> assumption because it's like you are right like they lost all access to the data so you're like well hundreds of billions of dollars is like or trillions of dollars is like based on the fact that they can do what they do like target well yeah it's like they're gonna fix that yeah yeah, yeah yeah uh they're like highly incentivized to do so it's like it, it, it would be a bad idea to bet against them 100 uh, percent, because they've got so much at stake and they have like i mean thousands tens of thousands of machine learning engineers and the rest of it anyways that's how we came up with the idea um, so so you guys have a ton of competitors i'm assuming yeah. so how does treat differentiate itself from all these competitors yeah okay cool great he gets to ask this all the time yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so it was short you're ready <laughs> you make sure you got this <laughs> okay so i think that every other company i've seen in this space uh makes like two main errors when it comes to like what is the purpose of an image for a marketer and the purpose of an image is not just to look pretty uh there are obviously a baseline levels of quality and baseline levels of kind of like adherence to brand but what you're looking for is a, an image that performs and up until this point too much of how to create an image that performs is based on like intuition guesswork fucking witchcraft um and so nearly all of the tools that, that that I'm aware of that we've seen um, basically don't give any intelligence to the user about what images to create. So you can go into a tool and say, hey, I would like to see this product on the beach, but why the beach? Why not the moon? Why, why not like, you know, the kitchen counter? It's the intelligence of like knowing what images are going to perform with which audiences that's like a very very critical piece and it was really hard to build and as far as i'm aware we're the only ones to have successfully built it so i think that's an important piece because otherwise it just adds work for the marketer like i'm i'm trying to do a million other things i'm managing like influencers i'm also doing budget stuff i'm responding to the ceo if i'm a founder and also cmo i'm also responsible for like managing three pls and doing a bunch of and fundraising and stuff like we want to take as much work off the plate of the user as possible and help them with the job to be done and the job to be done is to create images that will generate sales so we're exclusively focused on generating like winning content specifically ad creative um the other thing is that all of these images that are created by like other tools the kind of the model of the world they have is i give you one text description and I end up with one image at the end. Um, but really what you need to be able to do is to generate like large batches of images that you can just test really rapidly. Like, so to go back to that like beach example, um, yeah, I, I really need to be able to generate like 10 different versions of the 10 different versions of the beach. So like, I'll give you an example, working with a, a mushroom coffee company, we took, we basically looked at all of their performance data. We worked out, okay, we think that there's going to be a split between images where your coffee is in an indoor setting and an outdoor setting. So we generated 10 images, half indoor, half outdoor. Indoor one, significantly. Um, and then we went, okay, in an indoor setting, we think there needs to be wood in the shot. So we created like a bunch of different wooden tables. And then one of those kind of like spiked. So then we said, okay, now we think that plants like we think like an indoor plant like that uh next to the coffee is going to really perform and so we're like wizardry <laughs> created like 10, wizardry 10 of those and we their ctr 
we basically tripled their CTR. Wow. And their CBC is down like 40% or something. Wow. Um, over, a, over a couple of turns. And you can only do that if you're able to create like large batches of images that can all be I, tested. I have a question for that. So like how much do you have to spend per image to like have significant data to like, like okay, this makes sense, doesn't make sense. Like are we talking like a thousand dollars per annum? No, no, no. So, so we, uh, we run um, like during like our pilot phase, like, I think we run, you know, 100, 150 bucks a day for seven days uh, across like five to 10 images. Okay. Um, we also believe enough in the quality of what we do that we like for a lot of brands will cover the first campaign we'll just do it oh wow, uh, wow and then like you pay it back to us out of yeah the, the eventual yeah. contract you sign yes yeah. um but like, that's a great way to show value too yeah, yeah it's funny yeah. to worry about the which money we're going yeah. yeah exactly right so um you don't need a huge you know you're gonna have these like testing budgets um you know you have these testing campaigns that are pretty light in terms of budget um but where you can really see kind of like significant differences um, in in performance. Um, and the game is you need to just do that consistently because the creative needs to be constantly refreshed. Um, and like, you know, that's where we sit. I have a question. So I know on Twitter, a big thing is like ugly ads perform well, this type of thing. I don't know if you've seen it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Barry um, Hot, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Barry Hot. Like, yeah, yeah. like the posted and everything on the, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the ads. How do you guys like think through that? Because I have seen like, can I say like on the website for sigmatics on the website yeah the ads look beautiful right like nice background nice image and everything too yeah have you tried like trying to add a little ugliness to the ad and like kind of make yeah it well like I'm curious <laughs> of that yeah so one of the things that we have is a, a module called like unexplored concepts in the tool and it will basically uh, identify like different ad concepts that you haven't tried yet that we think right. you should try based on how they're performing for other brands so we'll scrape from various places um and uh you know we'll, we'll use like some some like data corp stuff as well um we actually have seen interestingly uh not not for that brand but for, but for another brand um the best performing ad had like some weirdness to it okay like the it had like an artifact in it um and i think it's because it seemed my hypothesis is that it seemed like slightly off and therefore it stopped people like you know from 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 scrolling um because uh there was like a small kind of ai artifact um but yeah we've 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 tested some of it it's interesting like those those tactics are i think really good until everyone's ads look like that yeah that's um, fair there's always a trend that gets started like there was one that's like my marketer is on vacation and yeah it'll host it note and it was like please buy from us in like three-year-old handwriting <laughs> and everyone just started doing that and and it, and it catches there's it, it also another one that said we're not the cheapest but if we were we'd have low quality products slow shipping all these things and a bunch of brands jumped on that i don't know if you guys saw that yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. um yeah it's interesting how quickly like these things play out it's one of the reasons why constantly refreshing is like so critically important because like these things they look like s curves and they're uh like kind of constantly stacking uh like left to right mm -hmm. um and th i think yeah that's i mean you know i'm beating a drum here but like that's what ai is going to solve it <laughs> yeah 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 do you guys plan on doing video soon? I was that's literally on the <laughs> tip of my tongue. Oh, it's so then you see it's like board mods. That's like the second question we get. What? Every <laughs> every sales call is like, oh, this is amazing, this is magic. But like, do you do video? <laughs> um, so videos in the works. Um now the the pace at which like it's like the Will Smith thing. Yeah. So I I would that. say I would say right now we are in what I would call like the valley of horror. So those images look it's like Will Smith eating spaghetti. Yeah, like pop it up. And it'll, 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 it'll haunt your dreams. Like it looks, it looks crazy. It looks crazy. Genuinely, um, if you look at like a tool like um, Mid Journey or even Stable Diffusion um, and you do the same prompt, you kind of like show the same prompt, you know, every three months, the speed at which things are improving is like crazy. Um, so that sort of, pretty horrific will smith video tells me that we're actually probably about four to six months away mm. um i think the first thing that will happen 
and what we're working towards is um what is up new money talks fam super excited to hop on here to shout out our amazing sponsor treat you got to check them out try treat.io link in the description these guys are changing the game i know your row as a suffering ig facebook do these meta ads they're they're a pain in the butt right now. We get it. I know. But look, creative is the only thing you can control. But creative is so freaking expensive nowadays. But what Treat has done is they changed the game. They built this awesome platform that integrates with Google Analytics, Facebook ads, Shopify, Shopify Plus, Klaviyo, Recharge, you name it, they integrate with it. And what it does is it makes a whole bunch of product photography that you can push into meta push into your ig ads and just optimize helps find the best highest converting customers automatically these guys are changing the game i've never seen anything like this before they can make thousands and thousands of product images that you can use to optimize instantaneously into ig and facebook so look that roas is gonna go up you just gotta use treat it's kind of crazy we've been using it we told all our friends to use it and honestly we're telling you guys new money talks fam you gotta check them out Link in the description below. Amazing team, amazing technology. Honestly, a game changer. You'll thank us later once you plug these guys in. Like I said, check it out. Link in the description. Treat. Try treat.io. Look, if you aren't using them, you're doing something wrong. Now, back to the episode. Hook generation. Like, okay. you just you just generate like a, a, you know, a bunch of really compelling hooks um, that you kind of stitch together. I don't think that's too far off. Um, obviously, one of the other things you can do is because we're able to create these like disposable images and like so many of them as you can stitch them together you can do well, gift style I, I was about to say if you have like a library say of like 10 videos right and like you want to just like flip hooks around over and over again yeah, you yeah. find the right one is that possible right now or is that not possible so that'll that'll be possible like yeah i would say so, like yeah. you're not recreating any video you're using the same video just like moving it around on like the the timeline yeah you could probably use uh that I'm not now gonna this can be like for a 15 year old uh there's like <laughs> there's some uh like very cool technology you can use that does something called scene detection which is a fancy word for like dividing up cutting up a video I see um and it'll cut up a video like according to the beats so it'll say like this is the hook this is the offer and it'll like slice it yeah. mark, mark the slices at that point and you yeah you could conceivably just like cycle through the the hook portion yeah almost like a slot machine that's but, funny yeah no because like, i i know like a lot of scaling ads has to do with that like you find kind of like all right this hook works this back end works this value prop works and i'll just like flip the hook over and over and over again like all right change the color change the speed change the text like yeah just like variations Constance. and you have to find the pieces that are kind of interchangeable with yeah the variation with that i mean and that so that's exactly what we're doing on the static side right mm -hmm. now is that like you know the if if our system says, "Hey, we think your product should be shot next to fruit," uh, how do, how does it determine that? Great question. So um, either so we do two things: we look at like every ad you've ever run, um, and we pull out like, "Hey, are there shots? You know, do shots that have fruit in them lead to a higher CTR?" We'll also look at uh, brands that we think are like similar in terms of the demographics they sell to, like to the customers they sell to. And see, like, you know, are they running like flavor Q ads where, like, it's a, you know, banana milkshake and they have the banana next to the milkshake, right? Um, and so we we kind of use that as part of the the recommendation tool. But if it says, okay, well, you know, uh, you you need to be shooting this with fruit, we can generate ten different kinds of fruit, and then just swap out the fruit, <laughs> and then like swap out the background, and you can like play constantly with like all of these different A/B tests. Um, and some of that, of course, will just happen for you in the in the background uh, on like Advantage Plus. But you need to give it the data, right? You need to give it thirty images or yeah. or, or twenty images. Um, and yeah, so the we'd want to do the same thing for for video. We want to turn into I'll learn more about you too. Okay, <laughs> we did a lot about really long time. <laughs> Oh, I think we have like 20 minutes. We got 20 minutes. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Like, okay. we walked in. Whenever I hear like a British accent, Australian accent, South <laughs> Africa, I'm like, there's definitely some story behind this thing. <laughs> I have this one buddy, honestly, shout out Ian. I, when I was at Berkeley for uh, when I was studying my undergrad, yeah. This guy started a, um, it was like a, I don't even know what he, it was like a biotech company. Yeah. They were pretty much trying to like get your brain waves to like do something like with your memory. He raised like $15 million like this. Yeah, it was the accent that just helps him raise all the goddamn money. <laughs> that accent helps, 
And then he like built some like pretty insane stuff. So whenever I find people in America who are entrepreneurs with those accent, I'm like, there's some story behind you. I don't know what is before we're gonna get a little competitive advantage. Little competitive <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. advantage. I mean, you've gotta you've gotta find uh, an advantage somewhere. Like the British accent helps a surprising amount. It does, right? They're like you just sound smarter. Yeah, I'm not. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, it's uh, like it's a, such a strange because I I've, I have a bunch of friends who you know sit in the UK, and it's a culture. That is like so allergic to failure. Mm. The thing that I found like deeply liberating about the US and the thing that made me want to stay and the reason I have stayed is, is that like entrepreneurial culture. Like if I have at least 10 friends who if they'd been born in the US would all be founders, but instead they're not. They're lawyers, they're doctors, they're bankers, like they're doing well, it's great, but like very safe kind of professions because they're also like culturally afraid of failure they're afraid of the like uh the you know the the, the shame of of of, of you failing. don't care about failure do you even think about it oh yeah fair amount but uh i think the the important thing is that in in tech what again is like particularly special about like technology is that um if you have a company and it fails, but you did your best and you didn't commit fraud, someone will back you again. And they probably will back you again um, like at a higher rate than they otherwise would. There are VCs who specifically look for failed, quote unquote, uh, first time, second time founders because they think that like chips, chips on shoulders put chips in pockets. And that someone's learned their lessons with someone else's money, mm -hmm. which they're is right. They're that much more likely to succeed. Exactly. Because you've learned all of the, like, my first... Oh, and the last VC page for the... <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's fun. The first company, I made so many fucking mistakes. I, like, but this one, I'm making fun new ones. Uh, I made the dumb ones. <laughs> the last company. Yeah. These are exciting new novel mistakes. Um, and so that, like, that was a huge shift coming to the States from the UK because, like... It, it's almost like having a scarlet letter or something if you have a failed business in England. Are you, are you okay chatting about like raising all the money and it's in Greylock, right? Yeah. yeah Greylock's yeah. like Reed Hoffman's fun, right? That's, that's. You know who Reed Hoffman is, right? Founder of LinkedIn. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, like PayPal Mafia, like the whole yeah. line. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So how'd that come about? If you want to chat about Yeah. Uh, so we were, let me see. So we were raising our, our we raised a pre seed round, um, you know, Led by a, a great fund called ENIAC and, a, and another great yeah, fund. Called, yeah, yeah, I know that. One too. And, uh, solid fund too. Yeah, solid fund. And then Vinyl, uh, it was uh, this e com specific, e com enablement specific fund run by a guy called TJ Mahoney, who was great, who introduced me to my co founder. He was the guy who made the connection. And so we, would, we were raising our seed round. And like a, the only piece of advice that I could give to someone like looking to work out how how to fundraise and where the fundraising is going well is that it has to feel almost like intoxicating when you talk to the partner of the VC fund it's almost it's obviously not romantic but it almost feels like a kind of date and you can sense when the other person is like really into you and by you, you I mean that you know your company and so Mike Debo uh, at Greylock had been the head of growth at Stitch Fix. So he kind of experienced the problems we were trying to solve like as an operator. I think he'd been at Greylock for maybe two or three years at that point and had made, he's a he's an investor in PostScript. He's on the board mm -hmm. there. Um, so he kind of knows the e-com space like very, very well. And I think we met on a Friday afternoon and I'd had like loads of these calls, right? I was- I got like nose left and right? Yeah, well, we, we didn't get- we had some no's, like we had some like people who, who didn't quite get it. Um, and then I had, it was a call at like 4 p.m. Eastern. And I don't like doing Friday afternoon calls because people, people either cancel and like no, they don't really bring their A game. But for some reason I took this call. And it was, uh, yeah, it was like, it was like a love affair or something. And it, we, we like chatted for an hour and then um, he, 
went and did diligence like over the weekend. Uh, and I think I then had another meeting on the Monday and I had a term sheet on Tuesday. Uh, and it was just something that he'd, I can't remember, I don't know if we were recording this, but um, I think I might have said to th this to you before, but like the the easiest way to raise money is not to persuade someone of your view of the world, it's to find someone who shares your view of the world. And Mike had a, and still does, I hope, uh, had like a thesis around like what we were trying to build that he'd kind of come up with independently. And so, you know, when when we chatted, it was a little bit like looking in a mirror. So like the whole like, no, you ever seen the show Silicon Valley? Yeah. So like the whole thing of like pitch deck, this, that, and so did you have all that? Did you have to do all that? Did you... So yeah, I did. I mean, a Silicon Valley, by the way, I can't watch because it's too close to real life. It's like, it's too painful. <laughs> I can't, I try to watch it on a plane once. It's a great show actually, but like it's too accurate. Um, it's like, but you can like sit in a boardroom and pitch a whole bunch of partners and stuff, lose on the phone and like, because, because this was all done. So the first, for my first company, everything was done in person. I okay. would fly, I was like 24 or something. And I, I would fly to, um, uh, you know, Menlo park. And the thing they don't tell you about Silicon Valley is it's like a very unimpressive place. Like oh, just, just, just geographically, it's just like low slum buildings yeah. and it like looks like Greenpoint, but like sunnier. And, um, so I would just go from like Uber to Uber to Uber, like, and I would pitch like, you know, Andreessen Horowitz and Kostler and, and all these people. Um, and then this, the second company, it was during COVID. So it was just back to back Zoom meetings. Oh, wow. Um, just constantly getting on, getting on Zoom. <laughs> but we can make thousands and thousands of images. <laughs> Does that make sense to you? <laughs> and then the one guy's like, whoa, I needed this like five years ago. It like, <laughs> makes yeah you got it yeah. um so that's the uh yeah that was the fundraising process but um and uh it was it was actually it was a lot easier the second time around because the first time around i think if it's not a if it's not an immediate yes it's a no mm. like slow means no anything other than it's uh like when can we meet again oh the other tip you know, it's just like, uh, you know, finding out how someone's into you. You know when a VC is into you because they'll give you their cell number. Because VCs get so much email and they assume that founders do as well. And most founders obviously do get a lot of email. But VCs are like constantly, blah, 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 every five minutes. And so when they give you their cell number, it's because they want to be able to like get in contact with you like very, very quickly. Oh. The second the second that they like exchange cell numbers with you, you know, it's, that's a tip for life. Right? Yeah, it's a tip yeah, for life. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, actually, I'll even push past that. Whenever I have used to do me stuff like that, if I get you someone's cell number, the best thing is just text them right after, and be like, "Yo, nice to meet you," because then they have your number too and everything. Yeah, yeah. that's like the best thing because like it's a networking tactic too. Like even like on sales calls, if you like get like a Zoom sales call, where they put their phone number there, shoot them a text right after. Like it's it's it's, it's you're, you're kind of different at that point because like, yeah. how much time do you spend on Zoom calls? talking about the weather what's your what's your, actually rephrase what's your like opening icebreaker on a sales where, where, where are you calling me from oh yeah obviously yeah and then okay and that's like 30 seconds where are you calling me from do that ha 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 and then it's like uh tell me about yourself like have them talk crap ton yeah yeah to get them yeah why, why where, where are you trying to go with this oh no no i just well, if you're curious i'm curious yeah. oh no no literally mine's like hey where are you calling me from they yeah. say i told them where i'm calling them from and I just push it to them. I'm like, tell me about your business. Like, what problems do you have? What are you pissed about? And then I'll and then I'll tailor my what I have to talk about. Sorry, there's usually a lot of wasted time. Like, yeah, yeah. But like th that's what I do. I, I'm like the way I think about it. I start to record record my sales calls. I try to get like 30 percent me talking, 70 percent them talking. Because if they're talking more than I am, that means like, I think that's a statistic. Like, yeah, yeah. Is, they, they did a giant study on like close rates, and they found that this anything above 60 percent them talking you have a higher chance of closing them yeah it's also true in social settings if you go to like a party or something um if you just let someone talk at you they will say that you're the most interesting person that's why i love podcasts because <laughs> you get talking right you're like oh wow this is amazing we're just like yeah really, yeah but like it really makes sense though because like people want to talk everyone wants to talk you know what yeah. I mean? and especially when you're working on something and like you care about something and you talk about it 
That, and then as a salesperson, for example, yeah. you, then you just pick and choose, okay, this person really cares. What is up, New Money Talks fam? Just wanted to hop on here real quick and shout out our amazing sponsor, ecom.ai. Remember, ecom with a K, E-K-O-M.ai. These guys are amazing, amazing team, amazing technology. Think what they do, right? You have all this content, all this, all these landing pages, all these product descriptions all over your website, right? But you can never optimize them for SEO. Either you have to hire someone in-house, hire an agency to do them, cost so much money and take so much time. But with Ecom, what they did is they built this awesome, awesome generative AI software that plugs into your store, Shopify, Amazon, WooCommerce, Magento, even eBay for all of you old timers out there. And what they do is they optimize the whole entire website, boom, instantaneously. It's honestly insane. What they do is they drive so much more new traffic, sales, conversions to your website through SEO. You already have all this content online. It's ranking on Google. Might as well optimize it and rank it even higher. And Ecom is the best team, best technology out there to do that. Definitely check them out. Ekom.ai by an amazing company called Writerly. Check them out. Now, back to the episode. There's about this. This person is so pissed about this. So if, I can, if I can solve these two things, then we're in love. You know what I mean? It's like, it's perfectly, same as the VC thing. You're like, well, this guy had this problem before. My thing perfectly matched him. I just gotta understand where he felt this to kind of match it. That's how I think about it. I knew a guy once who had, uh, he actually was a very successful fundraiser. And he's, the way he would do it is he would, uh, he would disqualify the VC in the meeting. He'd go, this is why you shouldn't invest in us. Hmm. And he closed. Shit. <laughs> oh, shit. Wow. <laughs> it's a very like I would not recommend it. It's like quite a it's quite an advanced move. Um to like go in and tell them exactly why they shouldn't invest. Um, and, and the idea is that they're not compelling enough for reasons or what? Well, no, so the idea is that then people will like talk themselves into it. It's actually a it's a sales tactic I've used like on occasion. Um plus you're not a good fit for it. Yeah, you go no, 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 but uh, but I am. I I Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um and uh, you do, you can do that with. with I, I've teams. been playing that game a lot lately with the 3PL, honestly, because we, we've gotten to a point where, like, I don't actually, I actually don't care what class you work with. She's like, I'm happy with where the, brand, the company's at. So when I hop on a call, I'm like, well, right now we try to find good. He, he, he heard this on a call on the way here. I was like, we're finding good brands with good founders. Yeah. And if you don't fit those two criteria, it's okay. Like, I have other people I can send you to. But if you fit those two founders, like, and then I was like, oh, no, like, I'm awesome. Like my brand's awesome, and I'm like, well, that's what I want. You know what I mean? Like, are you gonna hit me up at 2 a.m. on a Saturday? No, great. I th I said that word for word on the call on the car. But it's, but honestly though, like it's a tactic, but it's also the truth. It's like you do want to work with awesome companies. You want to work with awesome founders, especially at like a scale where you're talking to a founder. Yeah. You don't want someone calling you at two in the morning on a Saturday about a bug and you solve one. If they can get them to qualify themselves, then you have the upper hand. You have the upper hand. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Everything is sale. Sorry that we're turning it to this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, everything is sale. One hundred percent. We asked this other question. It's probably towards the end of this. I know we have to hop out of here. Do you have a morning routine? Do you do cold showers, cold plunging? You do any of this? Oh yeah. Stuff? Okay. So I, I think we think alike. Yeah, yeah. So I, yeah, you guys probably do. Like, what do I do? So I, <clears throat> I work out in the morning. So I, I like power lift basically. So I'll do like compound lifts in the morning go for a walk, get some like sun in my eyes and then uh, do that before coffee. Um, try to meditate, often forget. And then like have a protein shake with a bunch of crazy- Like athletic greens type of stuff? I actually do. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Everyone knows that. You're big, you're big. Discount honestly, I'm like yeah. using you guys. Hey, they ship like they really, yeah, yeah. honestly, athletic greens, well, it's a, probably a perfect person because they just run through creatives yeah, all yeah. day. Who knows what they're they have very high quality creative too. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like athletic greens and like a bunch of flax seeds and chia seeds. I don't know oh, if any yeah. of it makes sense <laughs> or if, if any of it works. But You listen to a lot of Andrew Huberman. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm like climbing Mount Whitney in uh, in the Sierra. Oh, Mount Whitney. So it's the tallest mountain in the 48. Uh, What's the 48? The 48 can take you a state. So anything that's uh, the states that aren't Alaska or oh in America, Hawaii. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So Mount Whitney is uh, it's like 21 mile hike. Um, Damn. And uh, you you do it in a day. It's like 12 12 14 hours. Um, and I was uh, like, I'm in a group because we're we're like all going together. And I put down like what like what my training protocol was. 
and they accused me of getting quote unquote huba pilled. Uh, <laughs> uh, so yeah, I'm familiar with with Andrew. Yeah, uh, Wim Hof. Did you do any cold plunge? I actually tried. I tried. Uh, I mean, I would the like the luxury I would probably pay for if we if we sold the company is like I think I would like a sauna. Uh, like I'd like an in-house, like a, you know, in-house sauna. Um, and so I've done, there's an amazing place in Fulton Street in the financial district called the Russian Baths. I think they've changed the name, but it, it used to be called the Russian Baths or it was like the Wall Street Baths and Spa. And they have this banya, so this Russian sauna, and it is definitely not up to code. They, I don't think they've like re- refurbished it since the 70s. Um and it's full of like a bunch of Russians doing like business deals. Uh, and it is so unbelievably hot. And it's just below the A train. Like, you can just hear the, the thing going past. And then there's a cold plunge pool there. And so I'll do that occasionally. And you're so drained of, uh, there's like a cafeteria down there. They serve Russian food. And I have a friend who's Russian. And she said it's like the best Russian food in the city. And the reason is you've like lost all of your salts and like minerals. So you everything, everything tastes delicious. Everything so you just go, oh, give, me, give me some dumplings, give me some borscht. That's crazy. That's funny. Or is that South Fulton Street? Yeah, it's 88. It's called like the Wall Street Bards now. Uh, yeah, it's on um, it's on Fulton Street. That's interesting. We asked this because like obviously like health and wellness and cold plunging is like a big thing right now. So like he just bought a cold plunge $5,000. <laughs> he loves talent everywhere, man. <laughs> yeah. so I did he get it. was 4,300. Right. Let's not give him a shout out. <laughs> Let's say sponsor. Yeah. So I did get an eight sleep. Actually, that's the thing I would, that has probably of all of the things that I have bought recently, improved my like quality of being. That's awesome. That is actually the thing that I miss when I travel. 100%. It's like not having the eight sleep. Wow. Um, Even with the subscription. <laughs> Yeah, that's crazy. Like they, you know, the Aura Ring does it, they do it, everybody does it. Yeah, uh, everyone, everything like ends up a subscription. <laughs> no, this, this was awesome. I don't. Oh, you gotta go. Are you big on Twitter? Are you big anywhere? Like where people find you? Uh, yeah, I'm on Twitter. Um, what what's, your, my... what's your Twitter? Dang it. Yeah, let's hear what the Twitter. <laughs> yeah. we'll, we'll put it in the description. Yeah, I see. Yeah, it. I'll be there. Give I'm him pretty a sure mind. it's Matt Osman AI. He's a chat. Oh, there we go. That's, 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 a good one. that's a solid one. Yeah, yeah, it is Matt Osman AI. Hundred uh, percent. Instagram. Insta- I deleted Instagram. Nice. Which, which is like time. Yeah, too that's much. a whole conversation. In it's, it's honestly been great. Nice. And so that's why I'm not on the thread. So that's funny. I deleted Twitter. I kept Instagram. Because Twitter was like, fuck my brand. <laughs> yeah. Everyone just posts like crazy on there. So it was like, well, that's, I deleted it from my phone. Oh, okay. That's what I would do is like, I would find like any two minute, like I'd be waiting in line or like I'd be in, on the subway or something. I'd like, be on like kind of scale your business. That, that's, <laughs> I, that's, I, that's what I do now actually is I delete a lot of them from my phone and I just, you can go on desktop, yeah, yeah, you can do the, do the web. Way less frequent. Yeah, yeah. Awesome, so Twitter, no Instagram, and then trytree.io. Yeah. Best one, and uh, I think this is awesome. Honestly, I appreciate you. This is, yeah, this is the cool. fun one. We learned a whole lot. I think I learned a lot about fundraising and sales yeah. and AI. This AI, AI craze is fucking crazy. Yeah, it's kind of, yeah. yeah, it's insane to comprehend. Like, eventually, the videos are going to get so good that the creators can just pr- take themselves out and say, hey, make a duplicate of me. Yeah. Go film this YouTube video. I don't want to film. Come up with the ideas. Yeah, that's, that's for the podcast, and I don't want to have to show up. <laughs> yeah, nuts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I appreciate this, and uh, for everyone else, check them out. Oh, one more last thing. We do thing called the gentleman's agreement. Oh my! God. Has nothing to do with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. To do with the audience. <laughs> so all this value you put out for free. Like literally, we get all these awesome guests, like crazy, like founders, uh, brands, AI, all this crazy stuff, and you learn so much shit from this stuff. Like some people. DM us and like, oh, wow, I didn't even know this was a thing. Like, yeah. probably people were going to DM us about like the fundraising on this one. Like, I didn't even know like fundraising was a thing, honestly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I like how to like fundraise stuff like that. So, all we ask is like to make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe to this. Um, Apple Music, uh, Spotify, YouTube, and comment below any other guests you have, stuff like that that we yeah. want. Bring them on and check them out. They're all yeah, awesome. check out trytree.io. Tell them when he talks, send you. Oh, 100%. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, catch you guys on the next one. Yeah, the next one.